Year of the Six Doctor continues with his latest release, possibly his best. <laughs> Hey you! Yeah you watching this video. Why don't you subscribe to the channel? Subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when all of our videos drop. I mean just look at all these bangers right now that I'm showing you that you missed out on because you weren't subscribed. So hit that subscribe button now if you enjoy our content and be notified when the next ones come out. And if you don't, I'll make you watch Love of Monsters for the rest of your life. Hello! Welcome back to the channel. I'm Oscris. I'm joined with a special guest here. Fellow uh, Six Doctor Appreciator, uh, Professor Pixel, as always, just join me with everything to do with the Six Doctor. He's he's not done. Year of the Six. Well, I missed Waterworld. I did. Miss, that that was good. But I, I did get that Reese. I got the uh, box set recently. If I can find it. Ta-da! You don't have to open those up or anything because you listen to them all on the thing. Yeah. Plus, I don't have anything to play CDs, so <laughs> I don't They're have a novelty. DVD. Player. You're just there. I mean, I do have a DVD player. I'm just very skeptical on if it works or not. If the world pretty much comes to an end and he has one source of power, he will be able to figure out something to listen to. Is a big finish collection. Yes, exactly. But. <laughs> The year of the sixth doctor is not ending for some time soon. And we are here with his latest one where it's not even really his series. It's a, uh, it's a 10th doctor series, uh, out of time three wink. It's the 10th doctor and the sixth doctor against the weeping angels. And the angels have been done pretty well in big finish for something that is purely kind of sight based. They've done a really good job with this. Although I feel like the um, compared to something like Fallen Angels, the the sound of them moving is definitely different here. Yeah. It's 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 more of, it's just more of like the, a stone thud. Instead Rather of than the, um, yeah, instead of like that the the um, gravel, the, the not the gravel, the uh, they use a, a certain sound cue for when it's like oh the angel has moved. It's like it's, it's like like scary yeah like dun. like that yeah they said you use the um thud just stone thud moving it's like yeah that was yeah, kind of yeah, it's kind of different it's not particularly bad but um the story so i i feel like we're going to go into spoilers anyway because we, yeah. we just want to talk about it in its entirety so you've been warned is, at this point you've been warned okay don't come crying to us we're not your parents <laughs> But the story of Out of Time 3 is that the 10th Doctor encounters the 6th Doctor, having been sent back in time by the Weeping Angels. And they go to a planet where once, a, or I believe it's once a year, it's there's a total just white out eclipse. Yeah. A whole just, everything is just light. No, nothing can see. It doesn't bother the inhabitants because they can't see. They only have uh, all but one of their senses, which is sight. But um, this is particularly bad because it's the Weeping Angels. So if uh, no one can see them, they are free to hunt. So what were your thoughts on Out of Time 3, Wink? Well, I was intrigued when, when the 10th Doctor realized, oh my gosh, they can't see. Um, but they're going around, they're moving statues. They move pretty naturally. Uh, so it's like all their other senses are pretty heightened they're uh, essentially daredevil they're they yes can, they can still actually see they just don't have sight what was that what was that one that had a weird name uh oh we have the basics touch taste uh smell yeah there's Pad padilla and estra estra estra, estra yeah what, what a fun name uh <laughs> i think the two characters we actually get to know because Dax is one of them, but he's pretty much killed off, and he's used. He's a, He's the new Angel Bob. Yeah, he's the new Angel, and he's he's. It's re, re, it's done really well because yeah. it makes the angels sinister in this. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a lot like uh, out of time or out of time. Sorry, time of the angels, where you realize, oh my gosh, they're murdering them and using his vocal cords. 
uh, to go ahead and just throw messages at the doctor. Yeah. That's pretty brutal. Uh, and actually, this is technically his first time uh, encountering that as the sixth face or the tenth face. So yeah, I um, do like that when the tenth doctor is trying to explain to him what a weeping angel is, and the sixth is like, it's like, I know, I've met them literally previous incarnation. I've, I've met them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I I think he he's very excitable, and a six kind of calls him on that. Um, yeah. I enjoyed quite a bit of this. I enjoyed their interaction. I'm going to say, though, I think there's just something, because I didn't listen to the first one, so I don't know how they interacted in that one. Um, but when it comes to Colin and Tennant and how they interact here, there's something not as close as he was with Five, which is natural because five and 10 in real life have a natural connection being uh, David Tennant's wife. Um, but <laughs> here six has to keep saying, what are you doing? He's essentially the kind of doctor that would call him a dandy. Uh, <laughs> um, but that being said, that doesn't mean their performances were bad at all. Uh, I think 10 I, I obviously know with leaks and stuff, we know 10 is coming back uh, in live action soon. But here, getting to hear him, it was just like being back in 2008 um, <laughs> towards the end. And actually, I think this story really brings that out because the end is close in the setting for Out of Time. And I didn't realize that in Out of Time 2, but with Out of Time 3... It's clearly there. Yes. Very, yes. At the, the end of the story, it heavily, well, it not even implied, it's pretty much stating this is tenant during his, um, during the, the, uh, the, the specials, the 2009, the 2009, was it? Or 2008? The, the specials era, like his, his last year as the doctor. That was um, 2009, I believe. 2009, yes, because, um, because uh, he's the TARDIS is deciding to take him somewhere else, and he it's very he very much knows that it is the end for him where the TARDIS is taking him. But he doesn't want to get there. He doesn't want to go there yet. He's delaying it as much as possible. But um, uh, for the story itself, I really enjoyed the sixth and tenth Doctor's interactions with one another. It's a pairing you th you would think would definitely not work because of the conflicting personalities. Yes. Um, but it works really well. I kind of like this more than 5th and 10 interacting because we've already seen them interact with the, with each other. They're a bit more they're on friendlier terms. Um, they like they like each other more than certain incarnations, but um with 6 and 10 I really enjoyed their dynamic in this story. Um, I like the two characters that the two characters that we we had with them. I, I like the constant making fun of Six's outfit, yes. even though they're blind, they can't yeah, they see can. it. And Ted says, "Oh well, they can probably hear how loud it is." They can, yeah, they can hear how loud it is. And then also we have the the origin of Six's blue outfit. Yeah, because Ten suggests, "Hey, maybe you should try blue. It'll work for you." Obviously, so that was, that's, a, that's a nice know. little. Yeah, Tim would, would know, know that six isn't going to remember any of this. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but it does go ahead and plant the idea in his mind. So that's nice. Yeah. And the weeping angels in this, um, they're, they're fantastic at this. I, I love like Angel Dax just being all sinister, just talking to them. It's like, no, we're coming. We're almost there. There's a, yeah. there's, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't consume two time laws. It's like, yes, you've made a mistake. Yes, we can. And it's like you've you fed you fed on everyone in the in the city. Why why do you just let these two people go? We're completionists. I love how six is uh, able to learn that this is a later doctor because uh, the angels pretty much reveal. Oh, we fed on you way back when you were in your sixth form and yes. you've had quite a few lives since then. And so it's like, I'm that far gone. 
And yeah. He, he then makes a joke about, I was hoping to be rather prosperous in my older years. <laughs> yeah, and then you could um you could tell that from the um the angels because they, they have a certain count of angels and it goes uh I think it was about like six like uh, six or seven angels and it's supposed to be somewhat tied to uh the doctor with his uh regenerations. So that was a nice little nice little tidbit. Yeah. And but, then uh, uh, there's the uh, the fact that the village, because the, one of their primary goals is because these two companions for the adventure want to get back home. We need to get home to the village. They don't, they don't know that basically they've been taken by the angels because at first they don't believe the angels move at all. They just know their statues. They don't know the exact details. Um. But soon you have them realizing that with their entire village gone and then them jumping back into space using the TARDISes, it does get rather uh, timey-wimey here. <laughs> no, no, no. You're here, but you're also there. We're going, to, we're going to miss our past selves so that way they can use our TARDIS. And eventually you have to get out the drawing board to go ahead and map out yeah. how they're lining the up. The red lines, the red, the red twi white, wires twine. Yep. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yep. Is it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so what would you uh, give the rating for this story? You know, I'm going to talk about one more moment before I go hang in my ranking. Yeah, sure. At the end, we talk about how it's pretty clear this is towards Tenzin. There's one line from six that I absolutely love. What are you running from? And it it set kind of chills, and you can feel the music swell up, and Ten doesn't want to face it. It has such an emotional weight that five didn't have. And I loved the fun of five. I did. And I don't know what I ranked that, but this I think would be a solid 9.5. Um I there's just something about it that's keeping me from saying, oh, this is absolutely a perfect 10. Um, but there's just so much in this that's beautiful. And yeah, whether it's the interaction, whether it's that weight that you can't feel with the other. Um, I don't know. But 9.5 is where I lean. Yeah, 9.5. Uh yeah, I would have to agree. 9.5. This is uh, surprisingly uh, a standout release for this year. Uh, I don't think so far with the, some of the releases, I don't think there has been a single one that have just been not good. They've been really, really good. They've been uh, they've been above average to good to really good, and this is a really good release. Yeah. So if this is the supposed end of Out of Time, they've ended it on the probably the best one i enjoyed this more than the previous one because while the previous one had some good moments between five and ten they just kind of forgot that the cybermen were in the story and were the antagonists this one rectifies that because the weeping angels are a constant threat you in the story angel dax is oh i really enjoyed angel dax as the uh as, as the villain as the as the lead angel um Six and ten, their interactions with each other is great. A pairing you would not think would work. You would think it would just be constant bickering, you know, like like two and three, just not liking each other. Um, but it works so well in this story. Um, even the two uh, companions that they have, they they were great in the story as well. So uh, overall, uh, Lisa McMullen, who, who is the writer, um, did a fantastic job on this release everyone everyone did a fantastic job on on this release and the the beauty of the out of time stuff is that you don't really need to listen to the previous one so you could just go in and just listen to this i think that's the whole, whole kind of point they are just supposed to be standalone things it's just the recurring thing is yeah. 10 meeting his previous selves so yeah this was if they really wanted to connect it, they would have made just one box set called Out of Time and each story would have been. Because they were about an hour each anyway. Um, yeah. 
I also think I it's mean, they probably they probably they probably will because they did that with the uh, Ten in River song. They oh. just had three separate stories, and then they also released a a box set containing them all. I think it's so. interesting also how one of the best ones thus far. Uh, well, not thus far. I guess if it's the end, it's the end. Uh, the best one is using a new monster rather than Daleks, Cybermen, something about the Weeping Angels, which some people can feel oversaturated with them sometimes. They just aren't like they love the Weeping Angels, but they also just don't feel like their stories are as good as Blink. I think this is better than Blink. So Ooh, I wouldn't say that it's a close, it's a, it's probably just under Blink. I think, I don't think you can, there's any way you could top Blink. Blink is just the best Weeping Angel story, but this is a close, this is a close second. Close I mean, to second be or fair, third. Yeah. This, is, this is one of those times where we actually get to see the doctor face a Weeping Angel, which we've seen a few times, but the best of those at the very least. Yes. He does mention meeting them before. Yeah. Yeah. And an even a similar trick was used to defeat the uh initial two at the start of the story, getting them to accidentally look at each other when the TARDIS dematerializes. That was a nice little nice little reference. Um but yes, uh definitely I'd say highly recommend. Definitely check this out. This is definitely a story you don't want to miss out on. It's amazing like i said at least lisa mcmullen everyone on the team uh, colin baker david Tennant, they did a fantastic job i don't think there is a single flaw i could really pick out with this story i, I feel it's just it's cl almost close to perfect yeah there's just there's just one little thing like if something else was put in i think if something was added that could just top it off then there'd be no denying perfection. Yes, exactly, exactly. But um, that is it for our review, our discussion of Out of Time 3, Wink. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Pixel, for joining me. Uh, I know you'll be joining me soon for another one. I think I think all three of us are going to be doing Beyond War Games because that's Second Doctor. Yes, yes. But you and me, we're probably not until another Sixth Doctor release. Uh <laughs> Uh, technically fifth doctor technically fifth doctor with uh doctor of war 2 but um you can uh definitely uh see me in some future reviews uh it's uh i'm now i'm now back in it new month new releases i'm i'm going to look at what I've, I've got coming out now so we got out of time uh we got fourth doctor adventures the nine because i i love the collective they're such great villains um got seventh doctor adventures silver and ice and Those, that okay. sounds great and my most anticipated uh the war master self-defense derek jacoby versus david tennant the war master versus the tenth doctor and given the description this is the tenth doctor that has already met the master good to know so good that know. should be a good one that should be a really, really good one. But um, that is it for this video. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Go check out our, our previous live streams. Go check us out when we go live uh, on what time? 11.30 EST. Yes. I, I, I don't live in freedom land. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives in Australia? Prison I land. In uh, 1.30 my time. 1.30 for you fellow Aussies. But... Check us out uh, when we go live. Check out the well, live streams if you've missed them. Go check out our previous reviews. Pixel has the redacted, Doctor Who redacted. I'll get back on top of that eventually. You'll get back on top of that. But uh, <laughs> for all your redacted reviews, you got Pixel. Don't know what Jimmy's doing. He just does whatever. And then you got me for some of the big finish latest stuff. But He shows up on Wednesday. Late. He shows up. He shows up. He shows up late. He planned the live streams, but he, he shows up late. <laughs> That's right. He set the time. Never the there time. on time. It's never there on time. <laughs> but, uh, but that is it. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Allons-y.